I advocate a lot for VR. Even though I do, I also struggle to find titles that grab my attention right out of the gate. I'm talking first trailer or a description. Forget the more well-known titles that top the charts like the channel favorite, Blade and Sorcery. I'm normally too cautious about whether or not the functionality is up to par with what I believe is a proper VR experience. The movement the interaction between you and the world, and of course, the functionality of the main gameplay focus, being something like a shooter, hack and slash, or a puzzle simulator. Vertigo 2, the second entry into the series, was one of the biggest surprises I've had as a spontaneous purchase in my life. While having a couple complaints that every now and then made me sigh out of annoyance, there are dozens of moments that make up for it, and an everlasting experience that has me excited for when and if there is a third entry. The story of Vertical 2 starts off with the protagonist Sonya waking up in Quantum Reactor 7 after trying to escape it in the previous game. Even though that attempt did fail, you are given an opportunity to try once more. Along the way you will face different types of beings, aliens and robots, friends and foes. And those met along the way will be as memorable as they come. Unique styling was applied to more than just the world, and going through your journey goes to show the creativity of a gifted mind. And while also taking some inspiration and making references to both Half-Life and Portal, Vertigo 2 proudly stands on its own as one of the best titles you can find out on the market. Being the creation of a single developer, Vertigo is in competition with stories and gameplay created by large studios, so let's keep that in mind going forward. A plot that seems basic was expanded upon and developed wonderfully. What saves it from being standard are characters like Cowboy, Officer 13, Enrique, and of course, Nani. The reveal of the world created for you is important. It allows for the opportunity for the player's amazement and sets a standard for what's to come. While Vertical 2 sadly left me questioning its quality upon seeing the first reveal, the initial mountainous environment had a very large scale but left something to be desired due to an underdeveloped and empty feeling. Whether or not it was the vision the developer was going for, it is nowhere near the visually grand environments you see later on in the game. You travel between absolutely beautiful landscapes dense with unique detail and the variety of styles shown off is nothing short of commendable for a single developer. Traversing the rich forests designed with verticality in mind, piloting a boat during an intense battle on the open seas with a storm slowly developing and hopping from one universe to the next, the visuals and art styles were truly on its own level. What I felt was lacking initially was improved upon in spades. What was also surprising to me was the gunplay. I've been seeing reviews drawing comparisons to Bone Labs and Half-Life Alex, and there are some truths to them. You are given a basic pistol, revolver, shotgun, and assault rifle during the first couple hours, and personally, I would have been more than satisfied with just those. Reloading was easy, and while sometimes offering a little hiccup, it was still extremely satisfying time and time again. I would waste ammo just reloading the revolver out of amusement near the end of the game, and I know I'm not the only one to do so. Further progression offers you more and more options, as well as secret weapons you can unlock as a bonus for exploring, which also acts as another incentive to play the game again, making replayability even greater when paired with New Game Plus, which is unlocked upon completion of the game. Most of the issues I would have liked to have seen improved upon are minor, and do not take away from the enjoyment. The ability to swap weapons between hands in-game instead of using the settings menu would have made combat feel much more fluid and immersive, that, as well as tightening up the somewhat floppy gun physics in the game. Trust me, it's not bad at all, but it lacks the polish you can get with something like the previous comparisons Bone Labs and Half-Life Alex. The bigger issue was the difficulty. I played on normal and needed to bump it down after getting bombarded with waves of enemies I couldn't flee from nor kill in time. I'll admit, I'm probably just not that good at the game, but it was still more challenging than expected. It was satisfying when I would overcome the odds, but sometimes it felt more than a small overlooked issue. And other reviews say the same. Regardless, the combat was truly fun to its core, and with a little polish, it would rival the top AAA titles. My takeaway from this experience is to give other titles a shot. If you have any recommendations, drop a comment down below, but if you haven't tried this game, it truly is a one-of-a-kind world with some of the best gunplay you can get. 
I have to say it again, having a single developer create such a unique game is mind-blowing. The VR space is growing, so the demand for these types of experiences are more than welcomed. So we can look past the minor flaws that any game is bound to have and appreciate the bright future Zach has as a developer. Because if you have seen my previous video about Warp Frog Studios, you know one man can revolutionize their space. This game has earned a special place in my book, and I know others will agree that it will be among the best games to release this year, and in my opinion, is also a contender for the VR game of the year. So on that note, thanks for watching, subscribe, drop a like, and let me know down in the comments what you thought on the video, as well as Vertigo. It really was a fantastic experience, and I know I will be giving New Game Plus a shot, even though I know it probably won't go that well for myself. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.